my fucking guys and dudettes hope you're having a wonderful day welcome to another episode of let's talk about cars yo i got my co-host today rohel how you doing my brother i'm amazing how are you good good to have you here uh so obviously he's one of the member of the community we messaged over instagram here and there and uh he said you know what i'd like to take a shot at being in the podcast and here you are so let's fucking do this today's an interesting day oh i'm sorry sergio i realized that i did not do an Inter, like the intro for the music but here it is guys sergio hit the music for the intro <laughs> what do you want from me dude it's tuesday i'm not oh. i'm not very pro uh efficient until fridays and then on fridays i get drunk and then everything goes south aileron but absolutely thank you for the plug thank you for the plug uh so in today's podcast i wanted to chat with you about uh, about a bunch of shit and uh, um, I want to get your, your point of view on a few things. Like, for example, and I want to start with this. I'm going to go through all of the subjects right now, and then we'll start going uh, one by one. But I want to open because with this, I'm looking into buying a new car, and it's going to be something for next year. And the level of that shit is the first time I'm ever going to, I've ever considered anything like this just for myself, where it's not my daily, but it's my sports car. Kind of like the, speci what's the car I have? The Pista. The Pista. <laughs> The Pista Spider, uh, kind of like the Pista Spider. That's what I want to have. And I'm looking into getting a LaFerrari Aperta, a Chiron, kind of a Devo, maybe the new uh, Bugatti that comes that just came out or got announced, the Pure Sport. The, the Pure Sport. Yeah. Like that. The Project One, the Valkyrie, which one of these? And we'll chat about it right mm -hmm. now. Also, let's talk about McLaren as a company. Let's talk about their new project, the BC003. Let's talk about the 765 LT. And let's talk about their financial problems. And for once, we're not going to talk about cars going up in flames. Or are we? Because we saw that a pista burned down this week. We'll get to that at the end of today's show. But also, we're going to talk about the electric car bubble. Because that shit's about to destroy a lot of people's pockets. And they have no idea it's happening. Then we're also going to talk about Rolls Royce and their new ghost and uh, some surprises they have for us. And to end everything, we're going to talk about the car market, where it stands right now, where it came from, what happened when the prices dropped, why are they up again, what's the forecast for the future. So with that said, let's get started. Now, this is valuable input right here. You're, I'm looking into buying for the first time my, my first big dick boy like car. This is something that uh, if everything keeps going in the right direction, which I don't see why the fuck not, um, it's going to be a reality next year. So mm -hmm. if you were getting this for yourself and think about, be very selfish right now, my friend, uh -huh. be very selfish. Would you buy yourself a LaFerrari Aperta, a Devo, a Pure Sport, uh, AMG One, mm -hmm. a Valkyrie, or am I missing something else that you would get yourself? What would, do you think? Is it replacing the Pista? Of course. Oh, so the piece is gone. I just want to have one crazy fuck you sports car because otherwise you never get to drive them. I really want to take it out all the time. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I do you won't think? I won't get the Project One. It's too dull. What? I think it's dull. It's a Formula One car for the street. It's a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like... You why, have a point. One of the reasons why I personally won't get a Black Series, uh, the new GT Black Series... Is because it lacks the panache of a like, sports car, of a supercar. It's not posh. It's not a Mercedes. It's not. It's not a, like it doesn't have the flair. It is a Mercedes. It's yeah, two yeah. Mercedes. He doesn't have the McLaren wings. He doesn't have the Lamborghini sex appeal. Yeah. It's still a Mercedes. That's four hundred thousand dollars. So my first thought is like the Project One's gone. You're, you're out of the Project One. Yeah. So it's Bugatti or the LaFerrari. I'd either. What about Valkyrie? Oh yeah, totally forgot. What about so, Valkyrie? If it's your one sports car that you want to drive every day, Bugatti's out. It, it's 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 like it's it's a Bentley. It's a super fast Bentley. This motherfucker knows his shit. You're right. You're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, because we were at we were looking at the Chiron the other day, and we looked at it in person. And the first thing he said to me, "It's a fast Bentley." It is. And do and you want a true. fast Bentley as <sighs> but it's to so take cool. down? The Malibu Canyons? You know, ah, that's where you're getting me. But also, imagine how big of a dick move would it be to pull up in your fucking Devo everywhere you go. It also looks really cool, but I agree with you. If it comes down to the driving, and also, these are probably the last naturally aspirated engines that we're ever going to have, right? Whether you're getting the legendary uh, W16 from the Bugatti or the V12 from the LaFerrari, which to me, 
that is the one engine you want to have, right? The yeah. car that fucking roars and you're going to keep that forever. Hybrid V12. Instant power. Yeah, sex the, appeal. So like for me, the Chiron or the Devo is what I call like a Nobu car. Looks good at the valet. <laughs> it, it's good to drive too. Won't disagree with that at all. But. No, no, no. You're right. And it's a car that looks amazing wherever you're parked at and fuck mm -hmm. it. But it's not going to be the crazy driving experience that you're going to get from the Personally, other cars. Personally, I, if I was given the money today, I'd, I'd get a Valkyrie. A Valkyrie. A Valk Why? For me, because I feel that the hybrid tech and the LaFerrari... It's already eight years old today, and it's not doesn't feel that bad. Doesn't feel like it's outdated. But I get, I feel like where we're going with battery tech these days, we'll reach a point where we like it'll feel clunky and outdated. The LaFerrari, yeah. <sighs> so, it does, I don't know. If, like you know, it's the Valkyrie happen. also has a battery, right? It does, I mean, but it's, it's a newer. New one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's four times less uh, heavy than those. Four times more fucking powerful than those. And like fucking Aston Martin's taking, it, the Valkyrie was announced a while ago. They're taking their time with it, so it better be good. And I hope it is. And I think it's going to be. Well, they have to. And that is yeah. a weird relationship that they have, right? For a lot of people that are watching, you you guys probably don't know, but Aston Martin and Red Bull together decided that they were going to do the Valkyrie, right? Because they got it like they got a, a Andrew Newey. Is that his name? The I think the, so. the designer from uh, the guy who worked on the F1. I think that's it. And he came in and he said, I'm going to do this with you guys. But then, awkwardly, Mr. Stroll came in and bought Aston Martin. And Mr. Stroll also told Red Bull to fuck off because they're going to have their new uh, uh, Scuderia in F1. So yeah. now it's going to be Aston Martin full-time racing. So where do you think that leaves that company and that project? Because that that could end also, by the way, really badly. Yeah, that's what I, I was wondering, like, wondering about this relationship a week ago. I'm like, it's not AMRB anymore. It's not Aston Martin Red Bull. No. So Red Bull's out of the equation. So does Aston Martin take over their part or does... Are they just going to finish it yeah. together though? But if they finish it together, are they going to have that conflict of interest of like, maybe I don't want to help you as much as I yeah, should. Yeah, Red Bull's probably just going to be like, yeah, so let's make it not as good as we could have. They're probably yeah. salty from them just like leaving. That, well, that's a possibility. Until they start delivering cars and people start to drive them, I actually am really scared because... Imagine how hard it's going to be to put up an F1 powertrain, whether it's a Valkyrie and it's like an F1, maybe not an F1 powertrain, but an F1 style type of car with strong uh, downforce and whatnot with a big engine, twitchy engine that's competing against that Mercedes that legitimately has an F1 power plant in that car. Mm -hmm. And these two cars are going to compete against each other for supremacy, right? Mm -hmm. And most likely Mercedes is going to win just based on everything that they're doing on the regular scope of things because in Formula One, they're destroying everybody. They're the ones making the bet the better car. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, it could turn out that Aston Martin's going to come out with a beautiful car that's going to be awesome, which, by the way, getting into that car is going to be a nightmare. Nightmare. The doors are ridiculous. Our, it, it's like I want to have a midget and just throw it like this. Like, you'll open the door and go like, here you go, sir. And that's how I feel like people are the, is the only way they're going to be able to access nope. the car. No question about it that the Project One is going to be the fastest. I, and that's why. Like, there's a huge part of me that says, well... You are getting an F1 power plant on this car. And it's not only like a regular one. It's not an Aston Martin power plant. You're getting the Mercedes World Championship power plant into this car. Yeah, but if you're spending like where I personally, like you've seen my car. Yeah. So I personally like three, four, five million dollars on a car. I cannot justify spending it on a Mercedes. And I, I love the feeling where I, like, you know, I lock my car, look back. It's like the curves on the car. It all just matters. It's all about, like, it's not how fast it goes. It's all about how the car feels, the emotion about, like, the emotion in the car, mm -hmm. the character of the car. Like, I tell my friends about this. They're like, they don't get it to, like, they drive one. But the car is all about the emotions and the memories and the things that you do with it. It's not just about, like, what time it does zero to 60 in. No question about it. But ah, there's something that gets my dick so hard about that Mercedes. There's no, there's not a better way of putting it. Because I was thinking about it. I definitely want that LaFerrari Aperta because of the V12. And then I started to think, well, if I'm going to replace the battery because it's completely out of warranty, I might as well get the, because my biggest problem with the AMG one and the only reason why I'm not like, I need that right now. is I'm going to have to rebuild the engine every what? 
25,000 kilometers or 15,000 kilometers. That is ridiculous. And how much do you think that's going to cost? Two, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000? But how baller is it that you need to rebuild your fucking Formula One <laughs> engine for your car? That is fucking pimp. You're that's, an AMG guy at heart. So I I am. And they, they treat me how like How many shit. have you had? Over 70. Exactly. <laughs> Just wanted to prove my point there. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. All right, fine. I... I, I I can see where you're coming from because the Bugatti to me is such a, what I like about it is I'll be able to take it anywhere and it's never going to break down. Oh, it's a, never, you could daily that thing. Never. You can daily that fucking thing and call Volkswagen and be like, hey, by the way, it's got the light on and they'll come in, you know, suck your balls and then fix the car and then give it to you back. It's incredible. That's something that you're not going to get in any other brand. Also, Bugatti, once you get into that, like, open, like, their circle, it's like, welcome. It doesn't matter what other car you have or whatever. It's like, you're a Bugatti owner, dude. Like, it's pretty pimp. And if you buy a Diva or something like that, I feel like more fun doors would open. But I do want to have one of the latest and greatest sounding engines that exists. And the LaFerrari has that. So, huh? and also the looks. I think the LaFerrari is oh. the sexiest car I've ever made ever made i think it aged better than when it actually came out like now i really appreciate all of those lines the la ferrari is literally the sexiest car i've ever seen in my life it's disgusting <laughs> it's in a great sexual way and now let's jump into uh from my own personal needs let's go into mclaren as a company let's talk about what's going on with mclaren for those of you who don't understand mclaren is going through a difficult situation right now a financial one and the reason why is uh the uh, the coronavirus pandemic really got to them uh more than a lot of other car makers obviously they had to shut down the plant they couldn't produce cars they couldn't sell cars for basically three months and that really affected their bottom line they try to get a bailout from the government but i and the government refused and it's not like the government refused to a lot of people which leads me to believe and this is just pure speculation right on my side that their books were actually garbage to begin with like there was yeah. no chance whatsoever that they were going to get this money because they're just not going to survive according to whatever the government saw and said, this might be a waste of taxpayers' money. So McLaren is in this, uh, in this situation where they don't know what to do. So they, they, they decided to grab, to grab their technology center, the McLaren Technology Center, which is that beautiful building where Shmi always receives all of his cars and all the dick sucking that they give him there. It's in that building. And now McLaren has to sell that building, sell it, so that they can have some money. But now here's the problem. Do you think they paid for that cash? Or do you think they have a huge uh, uh, loan on it? I am. I think they have a loan on it, personally. I'm 100% positive they have a loan, and I'm going to tell you why. Because they could easily just get a credit line against the building. Yeah, because all they had before the McLaren they started putting out road cars was the Mercedes McLaren F1 team. That's right. So when that's an outflow of cash, not an inflow of cash. And like we were talking about this the other day, I think we both said that McLaren is a company run by engineers. It is. No one in there has any business sense from what I can see. It kind of seems that way if we're, if we're looking at it, and especially right now in this situation, because we're seeing that they're trying to, this is where it doesn't make any sense. Because after the government looked at their books and whatever, and they refused to help them, uh, they go and try to fucking sell the, the technology center. But the thing is, they're going to lease it back. And let me ask you something. Would you lease back a property that you just bought to a company that's going bankrupt? I would. If, like, putting myself in, like, realtor boots, I would rather shoot myself. Yeah, because it, uh, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's the truth. It's the truth. So McLaren right now is facing the, the, the problem that they don't have any money, that they need to produce cars that they can't afford. They're firing staff. I mean, they're, they fired, uh, I think, a how a thousand people what was it it was a big number that they fired so they're going through all of the motions and at the same time there's a car that just came out of nowhere and like started making the news this week which is the bc03 the mclaren that looks like the senna prototype right mm -hmm. and a little about that car is they're saying and the rumor is that they're going to make five to fifteen that originally it was one car that a guy wanted to do with mso and what I really like about MSO, and you can say, I can say whatever I want about McLaren, or you can say whatever you want about McLaren, but their MSO program, program is really cool. If you have $6 million to give them, they'll give you a car fully homologated for the road in whatever platform you design, 
which is pretty fucking baller if you ask me. A lot of these rich guys, and this is how the Senna came about, will get together and say, you know what? I, instead of me paying the six million, I have 10 other guys that will pay, you know, uh, $800,000 for each one of them. And then they start building that. And then McLaren sometimes will grab the project and say, you know what? This is a big, pro big project. It's actually going to cost less. We're going to make it for 500 people. And it's in their best interest to do so. Absolutely, because they sell more cars at that rate. And, you know, like we, it generates sales, period. So now we're seeing this car that's coming out, 800 horsepower rumor. It, it kind of looks like a Senna and a McLaren Vision GT mm -hmm. combined. I don't how, know. how the fuck are they going to make this car? Like... The first thing that comes to my mind is like, who in their right mind would go to MSO and be like, make me a V6 hybrid? Well, that because they're saying that that's what they're going to put in the car, a V6 hybrid, which by the way, is new technology for McLaren, right? Mm -hmm. And now they're going into all of their cars. They just announced that they're going into all of their cars with the power, uh, with, the, with the electric power plant combined with the regular engine. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. But aren't the cars without the battery and all of that stuff already catching on fire and have like all these problems? So what the fuck do, are they thinking into jumping into something more expensive, more, compl uh, more complex when there's no money, there's no staff, there's no production lines for them? Even if I was ordering a 765 LT, would, would you feel confident they're going to deliver that car when they say? They would, like any other car company, no one delivers their car on time, but... They'd be pretty late, but if you were to ask me, developing that car right now, like, as you said, makes no sense. None. None, like, but if you, I call this the Urus effect. If you were smart, like Aston Martin, Ferrari, Lamborghini, go make an SUV. I know, but they're, they're engineers. They don't want to do that. There's not, like, there's not a single rumor about them building an SUV None. whatsoever. Nothing. Or even a four-door car, like a Panamera, that would be, like... Uh, a huge sales like uh, booster, right? Mm -hmm. You need to get into the regular production guy, like stuff. Even fucking Koenigsegg saw that, and they bought the Saab, uh, the Saab factory from oh, yeah. from Saab that was fucking completely bankrupt. They bought that so they can make more cars and like minimize their costs. What is McLaren focusing on? McLaren is just they just want to have the baddest car out there always. The Senna, the P1, now this, and like. I think they're not in it for the money anymore. I don't know what they're doing. Like That's bad, but this is really bad because yeah. if they're not in it for the money, then what they're in it for. Exactly. Which I don't, They started out as a racing team, at least in like 2009, 10. And I think they never left their roots. They just, they, that racing DNA, which drives you to go faster and faster. And like, you just want to have the best car always. And I don't think they ever left that train of thought. No, they still have it, but at the same time, yeah, you're making the fastest cars, guys. Like right now, the 765 LT. I, I watched all the reviews that they made from uh, all of the people they invited over to the reviews. And I'm sorry, guys. I'm just apparently getting all the text messages that anyone can possibly get at the same time right now. So uh, wherever I put it, it's going to make noise. So fuck me. Um, so they're making the 765 LT right now. And we saw the videos where, have you seen all the videos that came out? Yeah. I saw every single one of them, and every single one of them said the same thing, and all of the guys almost looked the same. Yeah, it was, it was fucking ridiculous. It was a little ridiculous, and I understand why they're doing that, which is fine. But what I'm saying is there was not one guy that jumped up and down that gave me the indication the car was incredible. What I, got the, 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 what I really got, the bottom line message from everyone, is kind of like what Chris Harris put into words, which is this is just too much now for a road car. Like, there's not enough grip for these tires. Mm -hmm. The car is too fast now, which sounds great and all. What, like, awesome. But anything further from this is getting ridiculous. Why don't you just focus on your cash flow right now? One question I had for that, like, the Chris Harris thing, is why, do why did people not say the same thing for the P1 or the Valkyrie? Like, we could make the same argument. They're road cars, but why are they that quick? If you know what, if yeah, you know what yeah I mean. of course. I I think I think they are. I think it's ridiculous. I don't think you're buying a Valkyrie and a Project One for the street. You you can't. If you really want to enjoy the car, you're gonna take it to the track and really feel how many G's you can pull on a corner and then hurt yourself and never drive it again. But at least that's at, about it. <laughs> but at least that's what it's for. These cars from the already from the what was it the 675 LT the 650s mm -hmm. was so fast already. People were like. 
No one can drive this. Like, no one can drive this. And I'll tell you this. I go up in my Ferrari, and I, I did it on the Senna, where I go up in the Canyon suit. You can't use 10% of the car. Oh, yeah. We felt it the other day in your Ferrari. It was like, we could just press it and let off. Press it, let off. You can't use more than that. The tires don't get, uh, don't get hot. Like, uh, there's not enough runway. By the time you're shifting into second gear, you're already doing 200, like, fucking 100 and something miles an hour. Like, it's not that crazy enjoyable anymore to have a car that fast i understand it for il mame which is like the you know the showing off and the awesomeness and like look at the numbers of my car but you can't use it anymore not really so i think if you're already hitting a wall there with what you can put into the ground as far as power goes and you're already making those cars which listen they're sexy they're really good looking focus on making a better product and focus on getting your sales numbers up focus on your cash flow it seems like a company without a goal their only goal is to make the most insane amount of cars possible that are the fastest possible yeah and they're you know how these how these other companies like lamborghini and ferrari they compete within themselves they try to copy what each other is doing they try to take out like competitors but mclaren's like they're out of that they're just like they just want to have the fastest car period in every category of everything that exists and create new categories and all that stuff, yeah. And they don't care where their financial health goes. That makes no sense. That makes no sense, but that's what you're getting. Most likely a company run by engineers and people that need, honestly, some fucking direction when it comes to your company. And I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean it in the way that I'm looking at your fucking books like everybody else and looking at your problems and looking at your production. And I had a car that fucking caught on fire that was a million dollars. So looking at all those things, I'd say, hey, McLaren, what the fuck is going on? Fix your shit. Get obviously a CEO outside of your group. That's that's what I'd say. Get a CEO outside of your group. Someone that's not already proven it with a track record. Look at someone that will get creative and look at the way that you sell something in a different way. And I'm going to tell you the great the greatest example I can give you. Movie studios don't make movies. Don't make money making movies. They make money being a marketing machine. That's what they are. They make all of their mark their their money on the PNA, the print and advertisement on each movie. Mm -hmm. The rest of the movies, the rest of the movie, the the budget of that, it's pre-sold. They already either got the money or got the investment for someone else. The big cash money in the business of Hollywood used to be the studio, the marketing machine behind it, the one that could put it in that many theaters and all that stuff. That was the money. You need someone that's looking at McLaren and in the car industry and looking at that and saying, what's going to be our spin? How are we going to make that money? Because obviously selling these cars is not enough. Yeah, it's not working. It's not working for them. So that's where I want to leave McLaren. And then probably jump into the next problem we're all going to face in this world, guys. The electric car bubble. Do you know what that is? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but... Yeah, just like... Yeah, there's too many, here's the thing, there's too many, as you guys have seen, Tesla came out, Volkswagen's coming out with their electrics, Audi, all of the big brands. And then you have extra brands coming out of nowhere, like Rivian, like uh, uh, Lucid. Lucid, what's the other, like Fisker now. All these guys are starting to come out with their own electric cars, and they're racing big time money, like Nikola's doing. Mm -hmm. And they're claiming that they have prototypes, but no one's ever seen them. And the problem here is becoming really evident. We're going through a period of growth in a market that's really explosive. It's, it's a market that's completely changing everything, which is a car world. They went from, yeah, we need more cylinders and more fucking bigger engines and all that into, oh, by 2035, in a lot of places, you're not going to have to, you're not going to be able to drive one of those cars. You're only going to be able to drive a fucking electric car. So everybody's switching into that. But the problem with that, it's like with everything, like when crypto did it, when crypto started and Bitcoin and Ethereum and all those uh, coins came out, what happened? How many people did an ICO, an initial coin offering that was an absolute scam? How many? A lot. Okay. So now there's all these people using SPACs, which are special vehicle companies. I'm sorry, guys. I know that you already know all of this and that I'm just boring you with all the dumb stuff that I talk about. I know you know all of this, but uh, I, we need to go through the motions. Uh, a SPAC is one of those special vehicle companies that uh, funds and VCs and, uh, um, uh, yeah, basically those uh, can take a, 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 an initial offering out without really going IPO without going full IPO. So immediately you jump into the market, you're already connected to that structure. I don't want to fucking make it more complex than that. 
And everybody is jumping into that train. Even my boy Fisker is asking for two and a half billion dollars. And I'm not entirely sure if he already got it. He's a man that's proven that he can't even fucking build a car with a regular engine. And now you're telling me that he's going to go and develop his new battery technology and all that shit. And just like him, there's many Nikola which is another one that raised, I think they, their market value at some point is like 20, 30, 50 billion dollars at some point when it was really up. And all of that money, guys, all these value, all of the money that people are buying, all these shares, all the stock in these companies, is going to disappear because they're never going to get a fucking car made. They're just raising the money and exiting. That's what they all are doing. I used to be friends with a guy that uh, introduced a fucking prototype from China made by an Italian uh, company, right? That everybody knows. Where's the car? Where's the car? He announced it like fucking five years ago. Where's the fucking car? I'll tell you where the car is. Nowhere. It's safe in some place because they just developed that so he can raise money and say oh look at the car we're making with this big company. Then they raise the money, they shut down the project and then they go oh guys Believe it or not, we lost all the money and the car's never getting made. Well, I guess you can invest in another car company now. And that is what's happening all across the board mm -hmm. with these fucking electric car companies. Everyone's trying to get onto the trend of electric car, like the electric car boom. But if I had two and a half billion dollars, I'd rather have it put it at McLaren's table than like any one of these companies no question about it but i think what i would do if i if i was really starting a car company if i was fisker if i was any of those guys go with the major players kind of like what sony did there's people that already make the cars that have the battery technology that have the licensing agreements for all of this shit to happen and you just go and tell them can you please make me this car i forgot the name of the company but the company that made the car for sony uh, that company is one of those companies. It's the biggest facilitator and coach builder of electric cars. So if you want a fleet of fucking electric cars, go to those guys. It's going to be a little bit more expensive at first, but it's smarter to get 15 cars done mm -hmm. in your line, promote them, get them all out, maybe lose some money and account it for marketing cost. Like if you will, the fact that, you know, it's, it's a little pricey. So you got to fucking eat it a little bit, but on the second wave of cars, you'll make your money. And no one's doing that. Everyone's going to, we're going to, uh, and by the way, this is what's so scary about the electric car game. Everyone and anyone can come in and give you the most bullshit numbers in the world, mm -hmm. in the fucking world and say, this car, like Fisker, Fisker is the master at it. This car is going to have 8 billion miles of range. This car is going to hold a, a charge in two minutes. You're going to have, you can plug it into your asshole and then the car is going to be charging three minutes. Like he just says random shit and people go well, like, <gasps> And then they release it on all car vlogs. Can you believe that this guy is doing this? It's incredible. I mean, he clearly has Tesla beat already. How yeah. Do these, how do these people expect to stay afloat, especially when all, all these big manufacturers are now getting into the electric car game? But they don't. They don't. This is the problem. They're doing this knowing there's no way this is going to get done. I'm going to just get to an IPO. As soon as I do the IPO... I'm going to pretend that I'm still working on it. And at some point I'm going to go like, yeah. oh man, it did not work out. Development money is the riskiest money in every single business in the world. Mm -hmm. Until you show me a prototype, which is what Rivian did before they announced themselves. The day they announced themselves, they already had, I don't know how many trucks that went from Canada all the way to fucking Argentina. And that's a long ass road trip. So they already had that. They already had uh, uh, the F-150 uh prototype already working and did i know i don't know how many million miles so they already had something to show for they had the tech they had, not only that the people that are building rivian like the partners in rivian like the, the initial partners made sense because one of them is a proven car maker so when you're a proven car maker coming in into a new world of technology and you, then you have the genius that developed all the technology and all that stuff well the investment came from them from that group and they invested 400 million dollars themselves into themselves they built it and then all the success followed, right? Ford invested at some point, 700 million, then they backed out, no, 500 billion million, and they backed out, but Amazon invested 700, then a private equity firm invested 1.2 billion, then another one, 2 point something billion. But that's a real company. That's a real company that has a plant already in, I believe, Detroit, where they're assembling cars, where they're putting everything together. It's legit the plan to put a car out. It's a real fucking company. The rest of the companies are just people with a plan. Like, imagine if I just go and sketch a car. How? Like, think about this. Let's say that I call Pinin Farina and tell him, hey, dude, build me a nice chassis, and we're just going to push it for car shows, right? How much are you going to cost? Uh, are you going to charge me? Let's say that half a, half a million dollars. 
they get me one. Let's say that I, I'm I'm very loaded, so I spend one point five million dollars. Pinin Farina bills me three. I just go to the car show. I rent the booth, right? Mm -hmm. At the Geneva car show, if you will, or whatever car show. I rent the booth. That's going to cost me another, let's say, half a million dollars, period. So right there, I'm at $2 million. I come out in Geneva and tell everybody, me and Pinin Farina are working on this, and I'm developing a new battery technology that charges itself, and it does it in 12 seconds. And the moment you turn on the car, and I start just spitting out like dumb shit, I'm going to make it to every blog i'm gonna make it to every news cycle i'm gonna make it everywhere because people are gonna talk about it obviously my claims will destroy a tesla right because they're just claims i don't have to back them up then i'll get my company to be listed as uh um to be listed as an initial offering without going through an, a formal ipo because i just do it through another company uh, through a spac and bam I'm on the market. I'm already taking everyone's money, and I'm valued at half a, uh, at let's say two, three billion dollars. Yeah, that's like all I have is three shells, and I showed up in Geneva once with them, and with that, I'm already like grabbing all these people's money, and then I can go at any point because you're not liable for it. Sometimes technology and shit goes wrong, and you go, "Fuck, we lost everything, guys." Yeah, I lost it all partying and all that stuff, but that's what I needed for the development of the company. And that's the problem here. We're witnessing it, the, the birth of an industry, the explosion of that industry. And at the same time, we're looking and witnessing the same thing that just happened with Bitcoin, with uh, all of the other cryptocurrencies happening in the car world, which is people just taking advantage of what's happening today on the market and saying, ah, oh, this is a, I can make a quick cash, cash grab and just do it. Grab a step. Always look up if you're going to invest in any of these companies, if they already have working prototypes. If you've seen the working prototypes and they're just not the ones telling you that they're doing it, uh, make sure that the battery technology comes from someone proven, that they're not just developing some crazy battery themselves because, let's face it, that took Tesla 20 years, <laughs> right, until today. So uh, it's not something that's going to happen out of nowhere. It's not like genius people, like some kind of genius is sitting in a garage and he's just going to invent something that's better than Tesla. It's not going to happen overnight. Don't fall for these promises because what's going to happen here is billions of dollars will be wiped out in the next couple of years. And those billions of dollars are going to be your billions of dollars to anyone that's listening. It's like, it's a big scam and it's sad how these videos about these cars with these stupid facts like these stupid specs not facts get so many views like the first thing that comes to mind like no disrespect to supercar blondie but she tends to like film with cars that are like stupid yeah you like know, the, you know like that the are, devil 16 not, yeah but you know they're not coming out most people do think it's a real car that's coming out how like like tech isn't gonna go from basically charging at 45 minutes to charging in 30 seconds in six months. But people don't know that. People don't know that. And right now, we've learned something from coronavirus is that everyone is willing to listen to their own story. No problem. So you have the people that have the theories that it's like, this is not real. But immediately when they say there's a vaccine already coming out, they're like, but there's a vaccine already coming out. Like the same guy that said he's not real. There's already a vaccine coming out. And if you're on the other side, you're like, well, this is very real and really bad. And there's never going to be a vaccine for it. We're always going to be like, everybody's willing to listen to their own bullshit and create their own story. And that is the problem here. When you piece it together and you have a prototype to show someone, people will go, yeah, that could happen. Because I want it to happen. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it makes sense in their head somehow. And then they put their money where their brain is, basically. And then it's wiped out. Yeah. Sadly. And, and that's a big problem. So now, because we're talking about the electric car bubble, let's talk about one of the biggest setbacks and problems that I'm having right now with my garages. I wish there was more availability of uh, nice cars that are electric. For example, Rolls-Royce just came out with their new Ghost. They're, and they also just announced their EWB, their extended wheelbase, which, by the way, what a surprise, right? Who saw that coming? I love that they took the time to announce it twice. I understand why, though. It's, a, it's called a marketing call. You're doing another one and another one with the same product. But that's a good excuse for people to know about. What your made me happy about that was Paul Wallace finally got to do like a big car launch because I never see him, never see his videos at any of these big ones. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> finally, everyone's getting attention. Paul's the nicest fucking dude in the world. He's he's one of my favorite people out there. Yeah, it's one of my favorite he's channels. He's so to watch. fun, so easy, like mm -hmm. such a cool guy. Like just 
what you see is what you get. And yep. that, that is awesome. You don't need anything more or anything less. That's Paul. So Paul got to go to the um, uh, reveal of this. So I haven't looked at uh, uh, the YouTube videos on it because the car kind of looks the same uh, as, uh, as this one. There's nothing. There's not a lot to look, and everybody's just going to tell you, wow, it's really quiet. Wow, the materials are great. Wow, the new infotainment system. That's basically, uh, there you go. I just reviewed the new Rolls-Royce Ghost. Uh, but not a lot of people know this. And this is something that I'm really excited about. One of the first videos I ever made on Let's Talk About Cars here was Rolls-Royce needs to make me the perfect car. And I did it in my Wraith. Well, in Balenciaga's Wraith. Uh, <laughs> and, and what I said in that video was, I want to see Rolls-Royce making an electric car because their cars are all about quiet. They're about like not feeling the gear changes, not about feeling the, the instruments that make you push forward, even though they're fast. They're amazing fucking cars. The suspension ride is incredible. The only thing that could make a Rolls Royce better is an electric motor. It all makes sense. Right? It all just binds together to create a perfect car. But right now, there's none of that. Mm -hmm. So what I've been hearing behind closed doors is that Rolls Royce is going to come out with their first electric, and that's going to be the Wraith. The new Wraith. Uh -huh. And I'm really excited about that. I want to see that trend happen more. Because that is a car that might be perfect. For the first time ever, people will understand what excellence and luxury and quiet is riding a car. That will be perfect. I, was, I drove a Wraith with Danny the other day. Yeah. And I could still hear that engine purring. A little it's bit. Still, it's, still yeah. perfect. it's still perfect. But if it was like electric... Ooh. And imagine, because if you have a Rolls Royce, you a lot of people think, oh, I want to have a driver take me. But what if it could self-drive? That's it. Like, imagine you just buy your Rolls Royce with your driver package, which is autopilot, if you will, and then you just buy your driver package and you don't have to hire a driver and then you have your car. That would be the most perfect way of utilizing an electric car, an electric platform. That'd be Rolls Royce and electric, an electric powertrain go hand in hand and i could not think of a better luxury car than that i know when, once they do that it's going to be over but also the other car that they're that's rumored that's coming out in that category is the mercedes s-class eq whatever the fuck it is which by the way why is mercedes so against just doing the regular s-class regular s-class and just make it an electric car why do they have to make a weird looking fucking car that, you don't think that's a waste of time for every single car company? When they make a like either a hybrid or an electric car, they make them ugly as fuck. Why? Why can they just be the regular car with the electric fucking powertrain? It's like it's the same thing that they had. They had so much trouble letting go of the S sixty five. I know. So they're they're still at the V twelves. They're still at the V twelves yet. They've let that go. Let's give them time. I think they'll get there probably in 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they better not. Now that Tobias left Mercedes or AMG, it kind oh, of yeah. feels like they lack a little bit of direction. They do. And it's very apparent very fast, which I hate. I hate seeing that because Mercedes was my favorite car company, clearly, for how many years? Project One. I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> but listen, but listen. I also want to talk about the, the car market overview overall of everything that's been happening, what happened with COVID, uh, what was happening before, and where the market is heading. Because I, I myself got really lucky. I, for some reason, just by looking at uh, uh, the economy and the world, the situation, everything that was going on, I said, I'm going to save all my pennies for March. Because I feel like cars are going to come down. And they were cheap in March. March came around and in February, dealers were stocking in cars because there was so much inventory floating and it was so cheap. So I kind of like nailed it there. And the only reason why is I'm always looking at trends and I'm always looking at prices. And the, the only way to know it is for you to live it, pay attention for a cycle, and then see how that cycle goes up, why it goes down, and all that shit. I wouldn't call that lucky. I'd call that smart. Well, it's it's a little bit of everything. It's a little <laughs> always luck plays always plays a part, but like obviously I, you I, use your brain. For I it. appreciate. It. I used it a little bit, and I saw uh, like the same patterns that I saw before. And I said, you know what, March is going to be a good time. So I I cashed out. I have all my money. I'm ready. And then COVID hit, and then everything just started to go like way worse. But immediately when COVID happened, I called all of my friends that have hedge funds, and I asked them, what is your your view on all of this? And all of them, three out of three, said, uh, right now we're going to have a dip. It's going to be a quick recovery. 
we're going to have a good summer. And then after the summer, you're going to have uh, October, November, that's going to be disastrous for the economy. And then you're going to get into the worst economy ever next March. Mm -hmm. That was their prediction at first. By the way, with everything that's going on, their prediction was less worse than the situation actually is. Now, COVID came in. COVID came in, and because we were all in, in, in our houses, nobody wanted to go out and buy a car because how the fuck are you going to show it up? So there was a lot of people that started to, that started to panic, right? So you saw the sentence go from like 1.3 million to nine, 800, $700,000, like that. So we had a big dip in that because of timing. But as soon as they opened everything and they said, people, you can come out. People absolutely forgot they had COVID, which is part of why everybody predicted the second wave, which... Some people are calling the third wave, but the second wave coming later uh, in the year because people get too comfortable in these situations. It already happened in the past. Everybody knew that, and it's happening right now. Now we're seeing it, and we're learning. People Everyone's done with it. They're like, this is my life. I'm going to yeah. live it. I'm going to go buy a car. I'm not going to Uber. And <laughs> And that's what everybody fucking did. They went outside, they bought every single car that was at a great deal, and then prices went up immediately. Well, at least people started to ask for more. And now those cars are kind of sitting there. So they had, in the car market, they had disastrous COVID. Then I believe July was really fucking good. Then August was off the charts. September held and October is holding. But they're all expecting this to be worse. The only reason why it held and it made sense was because there was no car production for three months during the time of COVID. Yep. So at some point, they ran out of cars, inventory is low, and you have people that want to buy. So obviously, you create a fake frenzy in the market. Anytime you see something go up aggressively, what follows an immediate aggressive up on the market an aggressive fucking down. It's a basic demand and supply chain. It's really simple. And now in the United States of America, which I'm not talking about any other car market in the world because they're all very different, right? But in the US, we're going to see this market really, really, really show its true colors after January 1st in the first, like the first month of 2021. Why? Because all the rent, uh, all the rent aid disappears. People are going to be kicked out of their homes. They're going to be asked to pay, and if they don't pay, they're going to be put on, you know, on their, uh, their credit score is going to suffer. They're going to suffer. They don't have a job. What people are doing right now, and a lot of people are doing in L.A., at least in L.A., they're grabbing their EDD checks, all of the money that the government's paying them on unemployment. They're not paying their rent, and they're making bank. So they're going to Rodeo Drive, they're going downtown, and they're buying Gucci shit. Like, everybody's down there. It's a party. It's not the regular customers. It's the people that are not understanding that once the curtain fucking opens, there's, there's going to be a lot of fucking happening. So I think the worst car market is yet to be seen around December and then start seeing it, like, really drop to its real form around Mar March, April of next year. Because this is way worse than what we thought. Yeah, I just feel right now, like always, especially in LA, but in the States in general, a lot of people are just over leveraging their credit. Oh, well, that is the biggest problem that we have. The, the, whether it's private or public, the debt amount that exists right now, it's at an all time high. And also right now, all banks, all of these financial institutions just really invested in their repo departments right now. They're just hiring like crazy on their repo departments. You know what that means? They're going to start taking away shit very, very soon from people. There's going to be a guy jump in your fence. That's right. There's, I mean, there's going to be a lot of weird shit happening in the next, I mean, next year. Everybody thinks 2020 is shit. Guys, wait till 2021 when people turn around and go like, all right, how much money did we really lose? And they look at the books and they see that the situation really hasn't changed that much. The cuts are coming. Like everything bad is coming all together. And it's obviously going to affect car prices. It's going to affect the house market, the housing market and all that stuff. What in your eyes is going to take the biggest hit? What type of market? I think like always, like we saw in 2008, real estate. Yeah. This is the first thing that comes to mind. And I, I don't think cars in general, especially during COVID, because we have to play another factor of need, which we thought like a year ago that, cars are not needed anymore you have uber you have lyft but now i think cars are more of an essential commodity than ever but i feel like real estate always even though it's essential takes a hit cars are going to take a hit 
And I feel like in general, it's going to be a bad situation. Yeah. I mean, all around, all of those markets are going to be punished. The, the, the interesting thing for the first time ever, and I see it now, I, I understand everything that's happening in the economic cycle. Oh, I understand everything that's happening. I don't, but I understand what's happening right now. And the gap between the rich and the poor is going to grow tremendously right now. Not uh, This is not politics or anything. This is just fight, uh, fucking common sense. And because that gap is going to grow, people with money will continue to have money. And I'm not entirely sure how affected those markets will be. Although the same people that have money are all cashed out right now, waiting for the opportunity to buy instantly. So that means that the market's going to hold like quickly. It's not going to go down tremendously, but I do think the biggest market, like the, the biggest market that will be affected across the line is going to be the lower market for everything. Like your, it's not going to be your hyper cars. It's not going to be your five, $7 million houses, your $3 million houses. It's going to be the 1 million, like when that reaches people, because we already saw it suffering on the other side, right? We saw the hyper cars not selling and then Ford and everybody else making deals like drive this car for a year for free and then you'll pay us. Fuck it. Just take it. Like every, everybody did that, but in the hypercar world, all that stuff, people stopped buying, they bought, they made more money, they have more money, they're waiting cash, and they're saying, let's go. So you think the low to middle budget? It's going to go to fucking shit tremendously because yeah. of what you said, the credit crunch our fucking nations in, whether it's private or public, it's really bad. It's, always... it's the worst that we, we've ever seen by a lot. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and if we're seeing banks getting ready to fucking repo shit, I think that's going to be a legendary fucking destruction of value across the board, but not on the super expensive stuff. I'm not anymore expecting Enzo's LaFerraris to drop the way that I thought they were going to drop. So luxury goods are going to be safe, everything else. I think so. I think so. I think so. I think it's been an interesting... Uh, this is the first time we're seeing anything like this, where a country that had a strong, strongish middle class is really not caring at all about that and just you know the the big guys are surviving and then the little guys just getting pushed to the bottom of the barrel and it, it is just the nature of what it is it's you know not bad not good anything but i've never seen that before That's in 2008 it was pretty equal and also we didn't have all the technology that we had uh that we have today like back then when markets would drop it was just the market would drop and fuck it you know there's not like a, there was not as much and uh, analytics and data that predicted all the shit that he does right now. Now like, we have AI reading data for us. It's insane. And people are doing it and people use it all the time. And they predict like uh, when there was a big crunch in the, in the stock market, like a month ago, I think it went down like maybe 10% altogether. And I was having lunch with this guy and he goes, Oh, that's perfect. That's what we were all expecting. And then he showed me a graph with the AI breaking it down and saying over here, this is where the correction happens. And he was a one-to-one. -one. I was like, what the fuck is going on? We've never seen. So now people with money have access to that shit. So they're only going to make more money and people without money do not have access to that shit. So they're only going to be more broke. That's one of the bad things with tech people who can afford it. Go up people who can't just go down. Shit. Yeah. And I, I think, that's it. So if you guys are looking to buy a car cheap and you're looking at the middle to lower tier market, you're in for a treat, but make sure that you have any money save, saved. And uh, if you're in the hyper crazy exotic market, you're going to see a dip, but I don't see more than 10, 15% overall in all prices because people are still fucking retardedly rich, retardedly rich. Now the medium term is going to be different. That's going to be fucked and long, pfft. but short, I don't see the the mega car is going down. Sadly for me, I'll have to pay that extra, but it is what it is. Uh, do you want to add anything else? I think uh, we just went through all of our, our schedule. Um, yeah, that's all You're good. good. Unless you want to talk about the pista. The pista had caught on fire. We're going to talk about the pista had caught on fire. I'll tell you guys this. I on in, I was on Instagram yesterday, and I, I'm going through my feed, and I start getting all these messages from people. And I just start seeing it. It's a car on fire. I'm like, I'm not clicking on this. It's another fucking McLaren on fire. And then someone messaged me with an actual message on top of the picture that said, ah, now you did this to Ferrari. So I opened it. There's a piece on fire, a yellow one. I think it's in Europe, right? Yeah. And there's a, a yellow car on fire. And everybody's like, well, you brought your bad luck to the brand, Alejandro. Alejandro effect. It's, uh, you know, I, 
I, do you really think that's a thing or it's just yeah, like I'm, random I'm shit, I'm right? just kidding. I, I don't think that Fista is going to burn down. I hope it doesn't. Oh my God, honest. I hope so too. That would be just for the rap. Because the next, like I saw the car the day after you got the rap and I was in love. Oh, thank you. I was like, no, this car. Let's hope that we can keep that. Yes. Absolutely. Dude, thank you so much for, for being our guest today. If you guys like Rohel, please let us know in the comments down below so we can see him again. Thank you so much for your time, brother. Thank you for having me. No, thank you. Sergio, thank you so much for your time, my, my ninja. I'll see you soon. Everybody, this is season five of Let's Talk About Cars. You Apparently, it's not season two. It's season five, episode two. We're on iTunes. We're on YouTube. We're on everywhere, everywhere. Just look up Let's Talk About Cars. You to all 15 of you watching. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you next week. <laughs>